All right. I remembered to turn my mic on this time, so we'll see how this goes. But kalt em ein numeu, desolaten nipurte. It is my pleasure to welcome you back to another attempt at streaming a Nafi lesson. So, um, with all of that said, uh, let's go ahead and jump right into the mix of things. So, uh, the topic for today's lesson, we're going to be covering adjective, attribution, uh, and possession, which both work very similarly. And so, by focusing on those two things, I hope that we can knock out a, another introductory area of Nafi um, and deal with uh, teaching you how to recognize some more commonly used phrases um, as a beginner in the Nafi language. So, um, without any further ado, let's take a look at what I've got behind me here. So I've got three adjectives that are placed on the board here. Um, and all three of these are ones that we may commonly see when we are dealing with basic sentences in Nafi. Um, they are peaceful, blue-green, and large. So, um, the way that adjective attribution works in Nafi is actually fairly simple. So, where we have a, again, a standard order of ways that we describe nouns in English, um, the adjective will always precede the noun that it's describing. Uh, and not here we can actually put the adjective on either side of the noun that it's describing. However, uh, we can only put it directly next to the noun that it's describing. So, again, with a limited free word order, there's only so much that we can do with this one in order to arrange a sentence in the way that we want it to. However, we do have the ability to choose which side of the word we want to put our adjectives on. And so by doing so, we have a little bit more control over the flow of our sentence and how we convey information. So the way that we do this is on the noun, or on the adjective that we are using to describe a noun, we are going to add a A. This A serves as our kind of arrow pointing to the noun that is being modified. So, uh, Yane, um, in the Discord earlier today, he pointed out a excellent example for talking about a blue fish. Um, the way that we would very clearly describe this, we talked about the words for fish last time, which is piowing. Y O A G. If we wanted to say a blue fish, we could very easily say it the way that we wanted to. Um, in English, with the adjective coming first, let's see, can we still see this here? So we have blue, and then we're going to ascribe this to our, our noun, fish, by adding an A to the end of the blue green. So, Ayana Bowie, you're going to have blue fish. Um, however, we can also do it this way, where we come over here at the end of the word, and we add an A before it. As you may see frequently in our friend Tirea Ayan's name, uh, we have Bailing Ayan. So, adjectives very simple in Nafi. Uh, that, is the, that is the gist of it, that's how it works. Um, with this though, there's a couple of exceptions and other tricks that I want to teach you that allow us to use adjectives in different ways and more effective ways. So, we're going to jump up here to left poem, which is a word that you may see frequently with readings. Uh, if we want to say good morning or good night, we say a uh, phrase, Revon, left poem, or own. Left 
So these phrases right here mean good morning and good night. More accurately, peaceful morning, peaceful night is a way of saying, uh, the conveying the same idea and not be. But you'll notice we didn't add the A before our adjective. And that's because anytime you see a word that is built with the prefix le right here, it's going to be an adjective word. And so we automatically know that when we are looking at le words. And so on the side that has the le, we don't have to add that attributive a because we already know that the word is an adjective and it's going to be describing the word that it's next to. So le is indicating the same thing that a is to our noun or, or tone. However, if you were to do this backwards, you would still need to add the A. So if you wanted to say, le pomare won, you could do that. Uh, but in cases where we have le words, it is more colloquial or acceptable to use le as the attributive A. So the other thing to note about adjectives is we can have sequential adjectives, but uh, for more than two, you're going to want to use um, a list conjoined with the add position, which means and sit. So that is sit. Uh, sit allows us to add more adjectives on if you've already filled two slots. So there's a slot before the noun, there's a slot after the noun, and then anything else in sequence we would want to use sit to describe um, more things. So like a, a large uh, angry blue fish. Uh, you would have to use sit for one of those adjectives in order to further uh, explain the state of the fish that we were looking at. Um, and in the case of a very uh, blue fish, uh, we have a fun way of doing this. We use the same adjective twice on both sides of the noun in question. So an excessively or very blue fish, you're going to be looking at Ayana Bailang Ayana. So that is an excessively or very, very blue fish. Excellent. Are there any questions on this? I will take a moment. I will leave everything up here on the board for you to be able to see. Really, I talk through these things quickly because they are, well, they're introductory. They're pretty straightforward for those who, um, who can pick up on the rules and the way that these work very quickly. And after that, it just becomes your knowledge of words and vocabulary and starting to build out that uh, lexicon of yours. So the next thing that we're going to talk about then, if there are no questions, I haven't seen any come through on the chat yet, is we're going to talk about possession. And this is going to be a little bit more complicated and require a little bit of review. So when we talk about here, I'm going to turn this a little bit. There we go. So when we talk about possession in not be, uh, we need to review our noun cases. If you were here for the last stream, we talked about the noun cases for our subject and our object. Our subject's noun cases are ill, or just l. Our object's noun cases are eat, or uh, d. And these are commonly referred to as the agentive and patientive noun cases, not necessarily something you need to know in order to understand how it works. There's actually, oh, I'm walking off camera. There are actually five noun cases that we use to ascribe roles to different nouns in Nafi. 
Um, we've only talked about two so far, and we're going to introduce the third one today when we talk about the possessive. So, the possessive noun case, a possessive noun, it takes a case ending uh, just like our subject and our object do. Um, the two case endings for our possessive case, if you are ending a word in a uh, vowel, you're going to have ya. Yeah. And if you are ending a word in a consonant, o or u, you're going to have a. Ah. So, exceptions to this, this one right here, are O, U, and consonants. So, like, my name, if, uh, if I wanted to say my fish, so Mako, who is my name, um, if I wanted to say Mako, uh, let's see, Mako, So because my name ends in an O, I am using the uh, consonant O and U uh, case ending for our possessive noun. Um, and then just like our adjective attribution, we have our uh, case ending facing, or directly next to, sorry, the, the, the possessive noun is directly next to the noun that it is possessing. Um, just like adjectives, this can go on either side. Uh, however, the case ending still is going to stay on the end of the noun that it's modifying. So the other way of saying this would be I O A N G Michael. So by the way, is the it's the same thing, it's it's Mako's fish. Uh, but we just have the possessive noun following the noun that it is possessing um, rather than preceding it. Uh, I, would say, I would say it is about 50-50 on which of these you're going to see as you're dealing with conversational not be speakers. Um, there are those who prefer one or the other. Um, traditionally, when you're starting to speak not be, it's best to start with your what you would traditionally see in the English language, which is uh, to put the possessive noun before the noun that it's possessing. It's just going to help you be understood a little bit quicker. Um, but if you wanted to go ahead and try to start with this free word, limited free word order stuff, um, you can do either thing. And now uh, I will pause a moment to see if there are any questions on this subject. And then I'm going to combine the two uh, concepts that we've talked about and I'm going to show you how that works because there is a special way that that was going to work. And my phone is buzzing in my pocket so I'm going to peek on that real quick just to see what that is up while I'm waiting for any questions. Doesn't look like there's going to be any. So let's move on to combining these two concepts. So noun cases, we have adjectives, with either la or the attributive a. So adjectives take priority in terms of their proximity to the noun that they're modifying. What I mean by this is in layman's terms, basically, if you're going to have an adjective modifying a word, it needs to find its way next to the word that it's modifying. The possessive case can jump a slot out and still possess that same noun. It kind of works through the adjective. So we, we consider this like stacking layers of modification to a noun. So uh, if I wanted to say Mako's bluefish, we'll just keep running with that example. Uh, I could say Mako ad filing 
Ion. I could say Mako Anna Bowing. I could flip those around. You get the picture. There is some uh, flexibility with how we can structure this sentence. Um, as long as the adjective comes between the possessor and the noun that is modifying. Um, yeah, and that really is it. Uh, when you're working with adjectives and attribution, just remember that the words need to be, uh, adjectives need to be directly next to their nouns, and possessors take the next spot out. So uh, the, the noun that is possessing another noun, needs to take the next spot out if there is an adjective here. Where you're going to commonly see this is... Excellent question. I'll jump into that one. Uh, I'll jump into that one right now. Um, because I, I, can, I can apply it right here. So, if, as I was saying, places where you're going to commonly see this, where you're forced to put the possessor a spot away from a noun that is uh, being modified by an adjective, is when you have two adjectives that are modifying a noun. Now, uh, there was a question in the chat asking about the adjective ah, ah, which is large. And I wanted to have this one as an example for a reason, because there is an A on both ends of this word already. So, you would think we might have A, A, P, X, A, but it doesn't work that way. You just have the one. Um, basically, those two now or those two vowels are going to condense down into one vowel, and that one's going to get dropped, and so it remains the same. Um, that's going to be the same for any case where you would be putting an adjective a on one side of a word. Um, the two combine to be one uh, syllable. There, there is. A, let's see, I'm trying to think. Any like confusion or tripping up on this one? If you've got an accented A because they're two different sounds, you're going to be dealing with uh, still having that attributive A being added on. Um, but for all other cases, you're going to condense those down into the one letter. Good question. So, uh, yeah, so Mako's large blue fish uh, is, that's, that's how you get that. And that is a case where you would have to put the possessive noun a block away from our um, noun that is being possessed, which is perfectly acceptable and is okay. Excellent. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to take this sentence that we've been working with, and I am going to show you... Uh, I'm going to show you how one would say a full sentence that uses this idea at its core. And then we can talk about the case endings, just review those again really quick. Uh, and then I will take some time to just kind of sit here and answer questions. These videos tend to go pretty quickly um, because when I'm teaching, I don't uh, tend to, especially if I don't have like active feedback, I tend to just roll through what I'm working on. Um, so yeah, let me erase the board here. I'm going to show you guys what this sentence would look like in a full context, and then uh, we can move on to a question section. So go ahead and be thinking of any questions you've got for me, uh, and you can drop those in the chat, and I will take a look at those here in a moment. So let me look up the word for catch. That's a important one to know in this situation. I've been learning not be in a long time. I have a decent lexicon, but even I and most of the other uh, Iharu are going to be using a dictionary from time to time. And that is perfectly okay. I keep Fuego easily accessible so that I can use it. And I'm pretty sure I know the verb, but I just want to make sure. 
Excellent. So if I wanted to say, Mako, I, Mako, catch a large blue fish, what you're going to get is a sentence that looks something a little bit like this. Let's see. Uh, I need to I need to throw the possessive in here. So let me figure out how I want to do that real quick. Uh, I could just say uh, plumps. I know is hanging out in the chat, so I can uh, use him as an example, and I could say essentially I caught the large blue fish that he has. So uh, Mako uh, Mako. see if there's been any thing in the chat doesn't look like there has been yet cool now is the chance to ask questions if you're hanging out and have some um, I can answer questions on pronunciation I can answer questions on uh, the basic noun case endings the agentive the patientive and the possessive um, I would be happy to answer answer questions about adjective attribution uh, I would be happy to answer questions about conjunctions. And that's about everything I've covered on the stream so far. So anything outside of that, um, feel free to send me a message on the Discord and I will talk through those with you. I'll give this a couple of minutes here. Um, and if not, we will wrap up today's stream lesson. Can I say something like... So... Let's see. What I would get if I read that sentence is I would get Mako catches the teacher's large blue fish. Um, there would be a little bit of confusion for me there. In fact, I, I kind of took a second to make sure that I was parsing that one correctly because of the uh, fact that the possessive on uh, Karu could be could be applied to Mako or Baiwang in that in that situation. Um, contextually, is how I arrived at that or as, uh, uh, at that understanding um, because it wouldn't make sense to. Oh yeah, and also the the attributive was on the wrong side of the. Uh, no, yeah, the attributive would be on the wrong side. So my, the. Mako catches the uh, blue teacher's fish, would be that sentence. Plumps is absolutely right. Um, but yes, you could say something like that, uh, and it's going to come down to contextual interpretation, interpretation of the sentence in order to understand um, what exactly that sentence was saying. Um, if you wanted to say... Uh, 
Yeah. If you wanted to say something like Mako's teacher caught the blue fish. Um, I would want to arrange that sentence a little bit differently for clarity. And that's where the limited free word order comes into play is we're able to use the, um, the structures that we have at our disposal in order to change the way that things are being said. So, uh, Mako's teacher, let's see, I'm going to write this out in English first so that I know what I'm working with. Teacher catches a large blue fish. So if I wanted to say this in Natfi, uh, I would want to say, I would want to separate uh, the, I would want to use the verb to separate the, the nouns. That would be the easiest way for me to understand where the, the uh, possessive is working in the sentence. So I'm going to work in a, in a, I'm going to work in the same linear order as English, simply because I think that works. You could flip them either way um, and have the first half of the sentence come after the verb and the second half of the sentence come before the verb. But basically, I would say, Kanu uh, Makoa. Uh, and that's just going to have to have the subject. So, Kanu Makoa Stetni. Stetni. Pailanti. Or, wait, we got to watch this. So, Ah. Pailanti. And that would be the clearest possible way, I think, to, to indicate that uh, the possessive is going this way, um, as opposed to, well, the other way uh, that you could, and because I'm, I'm getting locked into this, I don't know why right now my mind is getting locked into this, but uh, you could also put the possessive first. There's no rules about whether or not the possessive could be the first thing in the sentence, so, Mako, uh, 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 you. And that would work the same way. Um, yeah, so if you did that, then you wouldn't need to distance the, the noun uh, at all. You could actually end up putting the noun at the end, or the verb at the end of the sentence. And it would be okay. Because you've created distance from this noun and this noun and this noun by putting this noun first in the sentence. Cool. Well, any other lingering questions? Then I think that's going to wrap us up for today. Uh, I think this stream went a lot smoother. I had a little bit more of preparation and I kind of been working off of a, a, a lesson plan. Um, but also I think uh, I'm kind of getting back into the swing of this whole streaming thing. So uh, I will have this video posted as a video on demand on this channel and I will try to schedule something for next Saturday, uh, moving on to our next uh, couple of noun cases. But yeah, that's all I've got for you now. So as we would say in that uh, I will see you guys later.